you, you, you can name them, uh, but you know, maybe afterwards uh, yeah. I might be able to show you. So. so there you go. So that's me just asking you a question and you know the answer. <laughs> but that's what I mean. Like, I don't, you don't know what you don't know, right? So like, I look at it, I'm like, oh, fuck, I don't know how to make this work. So right. I'm just like, okay, well, I'll just live without it. Right. Well, you know what? I mean, and a great resource is if you don't know something, just, just Google it. Thanks for coming to my studio, Vince. It's great to Pleasure see you. To here. Yeah. It's always nice to have someone that I know personally come in and do an interview with because Likewise. <laughs> it's, it's easier for uh, the connection and easier to, to actually get into the meat of the questions and I can ask you hard questions without feeling bad. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do my best to answer them, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Can you give me a brief statement about who you are and what kind of art you make? My name is Vincent Lim. Uh, I've been a photographer for about 10 years now. Mm -hmm. Um that who I am is really just sort of an expression of that. You know, I've always yeah. been into art. I've always been a creative person. Yeah. Uh, loved music. You know, I was just always surrounded by that. So it seemed like the perfect sort of transition. I was a graphic designer before I was a photographer. So right. yeah. And I, I just totally immersed in that and it's, I haven't left. So yeah. yeah. So you've always been a creative person and you sort of have, you know, they say uh, everyone goes through different career stages in their life. You go through four or five or six careers. I don't know what the count is, but that's kind of what you've done, right? But creatively, you've said, okay, I'm going to do graphic design, and now I'm going to do photography, and now I'm hopping into videography. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think that's that should be the natural progression for all artists is to evolve from where they are, you know, to, to be in one place and be stagnant all the time. I, I, don't, I don't think, I think true artists can really you know, gravitate towards the idea that things are always changing and you're never really happy with what you've done because mm -hmm. you always want to be better or you always want to see things in a different way, a different light, a different yeah. color. Right? So, yeah, exploration is huge, I think. Yeah, yeah. Do you have any fears that are mitigated by artistic practice? Um, well, I always have fears, you know, but I think that's what drives me too at the same mm -hmm. time. Yeah. Um, but I think it's really sort of trying to understand what that fear is what what it what it's all about you know what it's trying to teach you I think yeah. there's always lessons all the time and, yeah um, yeah I think maybe early on in my career it was it was very almost crippling at times because you're just so scared right I, yeah. doing wedding photography for instance was such a scary proposition because you know you're responsible for somebody's memories and yeah. it's not like a shoot that you can you know there's no redos to it you know once the moment happens it happens and yeah. that's it you know you you yeah. either got in the shot or you've missed it completely and you feel shitty for the rest of the day you know so it can really eat you up and yeah. chew you out and spit you out and yeah i think uh through that though learning that the fear is what also keeps you on your toes it also forces you to think mm -hmm. two or three steps ahead because that's that's really is what again is going to prepare you for not just your art but your life as well because I, I really do feel like you know mm -hmm. i'm an artist but at the same time, I've realized over the years that you do have to be prepared for things. You do have to see things, not just from, you know, one perspective. Of, I'm an artist. I'm a free thinker. And, you know, I don't plan for things. I just, yeah. you know, I just kind of live my life. and can't really do that. It's kind of like you start out uh, as this, like, unmade ball of clay. And then, you know, with discipline and time, like, you kind of are able to become closer to what, your creativity or your like persona is supposed to be right? right so when you're talking about making that art and capturing those moments like yeah that's a very specific type of pressure that you undergo as a professional right. but you also learn how to prepare for those moments or you know okay at this time of day or this particular moment i have to be here i'm not gonna go do the you know shots of the friends and the party favors like I'm going to focus on the bride and the groom right now or you have a second shooter or something right like you prepare yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely so it's 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 seeing how time affects uh affects you is also sort of allows you to be a little more wise to to life yeah you know I think that's a great way to sort of put it and that's maybe the direction I was trying to like, I guess lead towards was yeah. the fact that I think through through time and experience as well you start to really um it's like, I'll use this analogy of, you know, uh, being like a musician, you want to be a rock star and you just, you know, when you're young and you're just getting into it, you, you want to just shred the guitar and you want to just go crazy and rock it out, right? Yeah. But over time, as you get older, you start to realize that slowing things down actually 
you get more out of that. Who do you look to for balance within yourself and external to yourself? It changes. Uh, currently, right now, uh, it's family. It's uh, my unborn child, my animals. You know, I think it's people, places, and, you know, creatures that influence that balance in me. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of the times life is throws so much at you that what it wants to do, I think what your ego wants to do is to pull you away from those things, you know, and so I definitely find balance in the people that I love, the people that I trust, and Mm -hmm. yeah, that's... Yeah. Um, You know, there's so many examples in film, especially, and you know, I I love movies, so I always bring it back to that, but there's so many examples of characters who will be sort of like that sage character who will come and give you a piece of wisdom at that moment that you needed best, or you'll have that figure who is actually there to teach you a lesson and you know even though they seem like a villain they actually ultimately become a friend things like that right so life emulates art right so you know you're describing family and friends and stuff i'm sure that you find that there's been experiences like that too where you've had a hard hard time or a moment where you in the moment felt like it was the worst thing but you came back out of it later and realized oh this is actually good for me or this was an invaluable experience. Yeah, invaluable uh, lesson. And it, it's, it's interesting that you bring that up because, you know, I guess to really expand on that question a little bit, I find balance in everything and everybody, every, mm-hmm. every experience that I come through because there's always challenges in everything that you're doing you know, on a day-to-day basis. And I think there's lessons in that. And whether they're strangers or, you know, friends or family, um, I think what I really draw the balance is, is I guess it truly just comes from myself, you know, being aware, yeah. you know, and saying, you know, although I can easily be sucked into whatever emotion, whatever situation I'm in right now, mm-hmm. uh, it's being able to pull out of it and go, okay, well, what's really important to me? You know, like right. what's, what, what really matters in my life? Why is wisdom a difficult concept in relation to creativity? Because I think it's different for everybody, you know, right. uh, I wouldn't say what I've learned in my life and the wisdom that I've collected along the way Mm -hmm. uh, is definitive for everybody else. It's just my experience and and what I've learned from it or, you know, the experiences that I have to go through aren't necessarily going to be the same for somebody else. Right. So, you know, to really say that that defines creativity in general, it doesn't really, you know. So we all come from different stages all walks of life Mm -hmm. we all have different morals and values and belief systems and we might break from those morals values and belief systems from when we're younger so um, it absolutely affects the art in that sense and the way you see things but I think overall it's that's the beauty of art as well is that there's no boundaries there is no definitive it's all left to interpretation in a lot of ways yeah um yeah, well, we were talking about this uh, when we first had our like, initial discussion, and it was about, uh, we, we got to the topic of children, right? And one of the things that we talked about was, well, where does education begin and end with the parent, and how do you nurture creativity within the individual? Especially if you can see that they have an aptitude for, you know, the arts. Um, but the challenge is, is, is yeah, what at what point is your wisdom and experience is going to translate to them and make sense for them or or when are they going to rebel like the obvious answer is that we all go through that cycle like no matter who we are what are our experiences we all start out very much like a sponge taking things in and wanting to understand and very being a very appreciative of life and then as we become our adult uh, we rebel against that which we know yeah. so the challenge is is how do you how do you um, share that wisdom or how do you interpret that wisdom uh, from others? Um, I think it's less about um, you know telling them what they should and shouldn't do what they how they should see things yeah I think it's really a matter of maybe allowing them to see your own exploration Mm -hmm. and allow them to maybe study and see that and Mm -hmm. you know ask questions and you know really kind of garner their own creativity and their own thought process and their own way of analyzing things you know uh, I think that's really a great way to yeah share the experience in that way do you think it's important to follow a vision through to completion 
you know, I think a lot of artists, and I've run into that same part, uh, you know, issue as being an artist is that, mm-hmm. you know, you have great ideas and you have all this gumption to go out and do it and you start it and mm-hmm. then you start to hit a roadblock, whether that's mental, whether it's emotional, whether it's uh, physical outside forces, right. something's always wanting to get in the way of you finishing what you started. Mm-hmm. And I think that's so important for the, your growth, not just as an artist, but as a human being, you know, like. Um, there's nothing worse than feeling or being down on yourself because you feel like you can't finish what you start. Right. You know, and so I think it is really important, regardless of the your 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 final product or your your, your final output. Who cares? It's yeah. just you know you had an idea, you started it, and most importantly, you finished it, and you yeah. have all your your entire life to. Once you do that, you you have that model, that discipline to, to realize that you can do that, you can finish a project, mm-hmm. or you can finish an idea or a vision that uh, it can carry out in your next one, in your next one. You just the more you do it, and now we're going into the realm of discipline again. The more you do it, the better you are at it. The more the, the more wise you grow, wiser you grow from it, and you know all the the more efficient you become, all those things, right? So yeah. and then completing your vision becomes so much easier. Well. It becomes less hindering. It becomes it becomes less of an effort and becomes more of a automated process. I think. Yeah, yeah, automated in in some ways, but also just more second nature, more natural, mm-hmm. more like this is who I am. This is what I do, and you know, I'm not thinking about the next great thing without really just saying to myself that I, I need I owe it to myself mm-hmm. to finish what I started. What is it that prevents people from living up to their potential? A little bit. It's like it's exploring your potential, you mm-hmm. know, and enjoying that at the same time. You yeah. know that you know that there's no end to it. It's just this is a moment. This is an experience. Yeah. Uh, live it. Breathe it. Yeah. It's absorb like, it. Um, I just watched. Uh, this is kind of completely off. Not off topic, but weird. But I just watched this movie called Whip It. I don't know if you've ever seen it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's like one. I think it's not her first, but one of her first directorial roles for Drew Barrymore, and it's about these roller ball uh, girls. Roller derby. Roller derby. Yeah, yeah. I think of roller ball. I think of the James Conn movie from the seventies. <laughs> but anyway, so it's about roller derby, and at the end of the movie, uh, they're talking about uh, why would you want to put yourself through this moment or whatever, and she says, "Well, it is a moment. Like I wanted to have that moment in time. Like isn't that a beautiful thing?" And I thought, "Wow." That's an incredibly profound thing mm-hmm. to be in a Drew Barrymore movie. <laughs> and it applies to art and applies to creativity. Yeah. It applies to like, you know, all these things that people say they want to do and then they don't do. Right. So it's like have that experience. Go out and do that thing. Yeah. It may not last forever, but the fact that you were able to have it, like it's going to be so meaningful for you. Yeah, well, I think uh, I think everybody's <laughs> maybe for lack of a better term, everybody's afraid to fall on their face. Yeah. Like, that's part of the, the beauty is falling on your face and yeah. then getting up and going, okay, you know, like I experienced it. It probably hurt like hell or, you know, yeah. whatever. I got, you know, bleeding and whatever. But, yeah. you know, it was like nobody can take that away from me now. It's it's part of it's part of my life. Right. So, yeah. yeah. So that's good. It's, it's a good thing to have that and to want to, to strive for having like a, a, a limit, but knowing that you won't ever get there. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to sound a little hokey, but... No, that's fine. What is your one artistic wish for each day? For each day? Yeah. Um, that, you know, that I've left it all on the table, that I've done everything I possibly could in that amount of time to... Yeah. And, and that's a bit of a hokey answer too, right? Yeah. Uh, but it, it, it is somewhat true. I mean, my motto is, you know, always be better than you were yesterday. You know, mm-hmm. have I really... Um, giving it my all, you know, mm-hmm. and mo- giving it my all doesn't necessarily mean that you know I've made the best piece of work that I possibly could have. Yeah. It might be something as simple or something as difficult as today was a really tough day. Like mm-hmm. it was hard. I, I had a lot of situations in my life leading up to this moment where I'm just I'm so absorbed in it right now and I can't be present to it. And yeah. you know, giving it my all can be taking that moment to say, okay, you know what, you know, you're going through some stuff right now, emotionally, uh, or physically or whatever. Yeah. Um, just come to terms with it, uh, accept it, you know, let it move through you and don't let it 
fester in you. Yeah. You know, and and then just do the best you can in this moment and, and, and be okay with it. You know, so that to me is also that's that's more of a challenge than anything really, right? To 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 accept it and just be like, Okay, this is the best I can do right now. Yeah. You know, it's funny, you, you mentioned balance, and I've heard it a few times in this, and I think that it's one of those great words that uh, really does put everything into perspective for the individual, because we're, we're talking about our, our authentic selves, we're talking about our individual experiences, and we're talking about balance for us, you and I, or, you know, the broader sense of everybody. But there's this idea out there that you can't achieve balance, it's unrealistic, you can only ever balance a couple things at a time or like make them better right. so the, the the trick is to find a way to like get all the balls in the air and then focus on one or two and then switch to the next two and then the next and the next like that's probably a, a really good analogy a really simple analogy for it but it's effectively what you're describing right yeah, yeah well in some senses yeah you know I, I i don't subscribe to the idea that you can multitask you know yeah. that, and that multitask is, is going to create a quality product you know or you know yeah. quality uh, work but yeah you know i think it, at the same time, it's. I do believe in in the sense, and this is just my personal opinion, that that, that you can find balance, but that balance isn't so clear cut and dry. It's not mm -hmm. just a matter of, oh, you know, I got to balance my life, or I got to balance this mm -hmm. or that. It's it's more of, you know, like I'm, like I was sort of describing to you, is that in every moment, uh, in any point in time, in, in your day, you can be presented with a challenge, but yet you still have to finish a job or you still mm -hmm. have to create something um how do you find balance in that moment well i think it's you know i kind of touched on it when i said that i think it's just coming to terms and accepting the situation for what it is right. whether it be emotional physical um and just saying okay you know like i mean it's just gonna feel this moment let it be what it is acknowledge it and then uh, work through it let yeah. it pass through me so that i can become present to this moment so that I can finish my job. Can art exist without enlightenment? And I would, you know what, I agree with that. I, I think what I'm finding though, uh, as, as I get a little bit older, as I get a little bit more wiser about, you know, my art or being an artist in general, mm -hmm. is that, again, it's like finding this balance between being an artist and being honest. Right. And for me, it tends to lead towards being honest with myself now in, in, in terms of saying, you know, does that really matter to me that I'm capturing these memories? It does. It does on the surface. But on a deeper level, I feel like if I have to be honest and genuine, if I want to explore that part of me, it's like putting it out there and then learning to just let it go. You know, and, and it really comes back to that being in the moment, you know, and really living, breathing that idea, that concept, that, all that matters is right now. Right. And once it's gone, it's not mine anymore. It's it is a memory to somebody, yes. But, but not necessarily to you. But to me it's like yeah. it's it's a memory that I can now let go of. It's the ideas that I can now let go of because there's another moment that I'm missing if I'm somewhere else. Yeah. Or if I'm in that trying to be in that moment. And I'm not trying to disrespect art or, you know, even my own craft as a no. photographer, right? But um, I think that's more on the along the lines of just this general way of being now that I, I've come to evolve into that allows me to let go easier, mm -hmm. allows me to balance myself in a moment. But it's it's interesting you say that because to me I think that's a perfect expression of that idea I was talking about earlier, where you make the art and then once it's out in the world, it's not yours anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So you're saying you're describing the act of recording versus the act of experiencing. So for you, it's more about, as they say, like it's more about the journey and less about the product, right? Yeah. So for you, you're in the moment, living in the moment, and as long as you're making the art and being present when you're making it, that's that's your greater truth, or that's you being authentic to yourself. Yeah, absolutely. You'll you'll preserve memories for people because that is important to them, but that's not why you make it and it's not for them to know that necessarily you know yeah i would never say that to anybody <laughs> but um yeah it's it's just something that is very personal to me yeah. that um you know i could i'll be i'd be fine if i didn't have to tell anybody but i'd be okay if i did so right um so yeah
but it's it's it, it, it that is a great way to, to to think about it is you know it's not necessarily about it's not necessarily about creating a memory it's about you sharing of yourself and as a consequence someone gets a great experience yeah. themselves and on on top of that to add to that it's it's allowing you to really learn that you, you don't need to be validated that you can just put it out there somebody can enjoy it somebody can cherish those memories um, but it doesn't affect you in either which way and I mean that on a very like zen level it's like yeah. you know I think as an artist we've all been there we put something out there and you know in this day and age and you know we want to see how many people like it we want to see how many people yeah. believe it we want we want people to comment on it we yeah. want people to follow us on our journey and all these things and there's we want the, and it just becomes this thing where it's like what are, you, what are you really doing this for yeah there's a huge yeah. instant gratification culture out there for sure yeah and if people get caught up in that and then yeah. so it's this idea that you're always constantly looking back or trying to look forward to validate what you're doing when all that really matters is that what are you doing right now and what does that mean to you right now because Mm -hmm. once it's out there it's out there it's gone let it go where can you expect to see yourself in the next few years that's for the most part that's a pretty easy question I'll be a a father which is new and exciting and you know I'm really looking forward to that and um, that's that's all I see myself being right now and in the next few years as far as being an artist or you know a whether it be photography or cinematography or you know whatever, um, I see that being based around that somehow. You know whether it's just taking photos of my child or yeah, you know doing video or you know creating a movie or you know something. Yeah. So I, I think projects like that will be where I see myself. Just little projects here and there. You yeah. Know? Um, yeah. It's a natural thing. It's a perfectly natural, normal thing, right? As mm-hmm. they say in American Pie. It's a thing that you're doing. It's the thing that makes sense for you to do is you're going to become a father, so where does your attention go, right? So you have to fit it into that equation. And your natural expression of that will be, like you said, making art related to that. Yeah, and I think that's the beauty of it too. That's, Or I should say that is the... Um, that's almost the responsibility that I have to not just to uh, create art through you know being a father but I think also the idea that I think a lot of people get caught up you know a lot of fathers maybe get caught up in the idea that you know I gotta have enough money I gotta work these amount of hours to to pay for you know schooling and a house and you know making sure I put food on the table and all these things and those are all important don't get me wrong but um, and I think being a part of that child's life and being responsible to uh allow them to express themselves and to, to go through and learn those things and learn how to be them, you know, it's, yeah. it, that's why I answer, I've structured my answer that way is because that, that's my responsibility at this point. So we made it through the gauntlet. <laughs> Final question. Um, I think it is a great question that sums up Vince in terms <laughs> of <laughs> the whole interview and what we've talked about and... Right. I always do this with every interview. I try and <clears throat> let or finish the interview on a, a note where it's sort of encompasses you and the theme of everything we've been talking about, right? So I hope you're ready for it. I think I think you'll be more than prepared to answer it. I think I, I hope so too. <laughs> uh, hope. Um, but let's no, get to, let's just get to it. So yeah. the question is, what is the meaning of life? <laughs> <laughs> um. I think the meaning of life to me, anyways, is yeah. um, to to live it, you know, to yeah. live life. And, you know, I don't mean just go through, uh, you know, to run through the gauntlet, so to speak, yeah. uh, and, and come out of it relatively unscathed. I think it's really getting in there and getting your hands dirty and, you know, falling flat on your face, as we said before. Yeah. Uh, getting those nicks and bruises and... and you know, really absorbing what life has to offer in that sense. You know, it's not always going to be great. It's not always going to be um, sunshines and rainbows and you know, heavenly. It's it, it's it's going to be quite the opposite a lot of the times. But it's, right. I think to me, that's what the purpose of it all is. Is that's how we grow. That's how we learn to be fearless. Who we are as people, or we're loving people. We're, we we can be compassionate. 
mm-hmm. but where where that stops I think a lot of times is again coming back to this idea that we need to validate ourselves we need to validate what we believe in or what we think we believe in yeah or what we're taught to believe in so as a consequence of trying to come o- overcome the insecurities we end up not doing the thing that we should do which is the caring and compassion thing well, what we're what we're <sighs> What is intrinsically natural to us? Yeah. You know? Um, sorry, go ahead. You know, no, no, it's okay. But uh, the challenge is like, is like that we, you have to overcome that selfish nature. And I don't mean selfish in the sense of like caring for yourself. I mean selfish as in doing something that you think is the thing that's best for you at the risk of hurting other people, right? Like we do selfish things that are wrong because of this need to validate ourselves because of fears and concerns and things when reality if you can overcome overcome those things you can actually become someone who contributes in a much better way to society and i think the point to it all is to really just take it in let it move through you Mm -hmm. and then your output of that emotion is giving back to that person you know Mm -hmm. money aside uh status aside uh you know we ultimately just want to live a happy life and what does that mean happiness well i think to me happiness is learning to accept the fact that there will be unhappy moments in your life Mm -hmm. and people will try and 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 impart that on you that unhappiness right so do you buy into it or do you get dragged into it do you get sucked into that feeling or do you say you know oh i don't understand where you're coming from but i understand what you're saying i understand what what it's coming out as um but i'm not mad at you for it yeah i'm just accepting it for what it is and you know again this is it this comes back to our entire conversation thus far is everything always comes back to accepting it for what it is letting it move through you not letting it fester in you and then outputting it somehow so. Yeah, like there's this really simple analogy about rain clouds that I like to use, which is that uh, some people are like rain clouds. They're going to rain on you, but it's your choice. Are you going to be affected by the rain and, and let it bother you? Are you going to get an umbrella and, you know, deflect it? Or are you going to be excited that, that it's raining? Like you can go about it a few different ways, but the reality is, is you don't have to be affected by that person. You choose how you feel about that person. Right. You choose what emotions that you have. It's a hard thing to accept. It's a hard thing to learn to deal with your emotions in that way. But we absolutely have control over our emotions. Yeah, and I think to to, to really add to that, you know, because I agree, um, the challenge will be, and I think a lot of people, you know, again, if I can impart the meaning of life to me is, you know, don't stop there. You know, don't stop by just accepting it and... Um, choosing not to be a part of that that type of energy but i i also feel it's our responsibility as human beings to bring them bring whoever you're in 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 conflict with or whoever's in conflict with themselves to bring them out of that you know again maybe to touch maybe a little bit to, uh, to, to to provide a little bit more value and insight to your viewers a little bit you know i think it's really important that i state that saying all these things might be fluffy to some but uh, you know I want to be very clear in saying that I don't think it's it's not easy mm-hmm. you know uh, it's simple but it's not easy yeah. and um, and that makes it easy to talk about right because it's simple it's direct it's straightforward but right. in, in terms of execution so. and I, I, I have that my own challenges with it from day to day situations right but yeah I mean that is the overall idea and that overall idea helps to dictate how my life is now and and I'm a relatively content and happy person much more content and happy than I've ever been right so um, I'm sure that's saying something yeah yeah absolutely man <laughs> well this has been great cool I've, I've enjoyed this a lot yeah I hope was. and I, I hope we can do it again sometime in the future and I'm going to slot you into my Rolodex of artists Sweet. you know people who I like to call back to and you know we've talked about the network thing too you know eventually build a bigger network and I hope that uh, I hope all the best for you I'm excited to see where you take fatherhood because so, so far it's been it's been an interesting ride watching you as a 
as an artist. So. Yeah, um, it has been. It has been very interesting. That's probably the best way I could put it. So. Yeah. So that's it, Vince. That's that's the whole interview.